Now you can see inside my bookmarks panel, there's not loads of things because I don't need everything inside of here because I use dashboards which help me find all the files that I actually need to look at. This is Vaultcraft, a collaborative shared vault inside of Obsidian that's on publish. So you can see all of my notes and all of John's notes that are shared to publish. I'll leave a link in the description, but you can see inside of my folder, if I hover over, I've got around 5,500 files in there currently. And that's what the uh, folder system looks like. But inside the bookmarks, I have like nothing in comparison. When you go to add a bookmark, you get an edit window, which gives you the path of whatever it is you're trying to bookmark. You can bookmark essentially anything. So a file, a folder, a canvas, a graph, a search, anything like that. Then you can title it so you can name it anything that you want. And then you can add it to a bookmark group. You can see I have two groups, either book or highlight. And when you want to add a group, you can do it in the exact same way as adding any folder. It's just title it. And then you can move things around. So say I want to move all the course stuff into the group. It, the course is now in the group and then I drag it back up and it's, it's all custom sorting, which is why I use bookmarks over the files. And the highlights group is for things that I need top of mind. So for example, this is a book that I'm currently reading, Introduction to Ecological Psychology. These are all the imported notes from the Kindle, which is using the Kindle plugin. And for reference, that's the Kindle highlights plugin. I've been using this for ages, just to sync all of the notes from the Kindle to Obsidian, very similar to Readwise, but this does it without Readwise because I don't pay for Readwise, so I don't use it. And you can see I've renamed it inside of the bookmarks to ED books. So instead of having all of this in there, like you would have done in the start pane, it's just ED book and it's in there because I'm still reading it. I'm still actively looking at it. So when I want to reference it in any of the projects that I'm working on, I can see it straight in the bookmarks tab to open it up. So if I middle click on my mouse, it will then open it up as another tab to the side. So if I am working on a project here, I can middle click and it will come up in the tabs like that. Now I'm also writing a book which has lots of different points inside of the file. So I want to go to some headings a little bit more than others. So if I'm planning out a plot, for example, I can map the heading inside of the bookmarks. And because I don't want to share the plot on the world building of the book yet, <laughs> I'm going to right click on this example. So I've created a new file, example file, right click, and then it says bookmark this heading, bookmark the heading. Here we get the edit window. So I've titled it plot. It's actually going to the heading inside of the example file. It's going to the bookmark group, save, and you can see now we've got the plot heading inside of another file. Now it's called the same. There's no way to differentiate that, which is, it, it can get confusing, which is where you could come in, right click, and then rename this to plot one, plot two, or whatever you want to do, which is actually what I do inside of versioning inside of my writing. So you can see now I've got four different versions of a plot, so four different types of plot, plot one, two, three, four. And inside of the bookmarks, I've created a plot version group. So right click, you can see new group, and I've created that inside of the book. So if I click simple plot, it will now take me to plot one. Something I do want to say here, though, because I can see this already being a mistake that people will make, is if I was to bookmark this, so right click, bookmark, plot two inside of versions save and then I rename this heading so if I was to get rid of plot two in there this is now being directed to something that doesn't exist so if I click here nothing happens you can see nothing's going on because I haven't renamed this heading so if I come in go to now click it's directing to the right heading so if I was to right click on the heading rename this heading now get rid of the two and save then click on plot two it's now been redirected because the rename heading has renamed this path in the bookmarks so it's still going to the same place so again i'm going to right click rename heading then add to then enter and now it's changed the link here so it's still going to the same heading just as a heads up if you do link to a heading you rename the heading rather than just typing the difference so the plot two is an interesting plot, plot three is boring, and plot four is pretty good. So I'll just add those in, right click, bookmark, boring, right click, bookmark, good. Now I have links going to each version of the plot. So when I'm working things out inside of this book project, I can see all of the versions going on and all of the different versions of act one, act two, scene five, seven, whatever. I can see all the different versions and different versions of the paragraphs and link backwards and forwards. And because inside of the bookmarks panel, we can use the page preview, I can control and then hover over and it shows me what's actually going on. So I can quickly see from the bookmarks what's going on here. So when I'm, for example, planning out the plot and I want to see what's going on in scene seven i can then go to imagine this is scene seven control and then i can reference whatever's going on in scene seven and then go back to the plot it just makes navigation far easier when i'm writing but because i've already done this for the plot so inside of the book i have this sort of structure i'm only linking to the one that i want to use so i'm just going to get rid of this group because i don't need it anymore 
I then bookmark the templates folder. So if I click here, it takes me to the templates folder inside of the vault, which is my templates folder. It just saves a couple of clicks. So when I go to the templates, I can then edit them, which is, it, it's just easier. Then at the top, I have my three dashboards. Now I'm not gonna go into the book dashboard for obvious reasons, but if I click on the course, you can see it takes me to the course dashboard, which is just a canvas with data view queries in. I'll go through how I do all of this in a future video. And then the same with the home canvas dashboard. The main issue I have with using this at the moment is you can see if I click on the course it will zoom all the way out and I click on the home it zooms all the way out. I actually want it to zoom in to a certain section so if for example I click on my home workspace button you can see it zooms me in to the the middle nine squares which is where I prioritize all of the work again I'll explain all of this in a future video but if I click on to course it zooms out and click home it zooms all the way out again and I don't like that I can't see anything from this view so I again I have to I like come in and zoom in every time which is a little bit annoying but when I don't want to open up just the workspace and I want to keep what's going on then it makes it easier to just go into the bookmarks and click home let me see what's going on and then navigate to whatever file I need to go to. As I use data view queries inside of the dashboards, I don't really ever bookmark any of the searches because I just have a data view query which does the searching for me and I don't use the graph view at all. So I'm not gonna bookmark anything in a graph view, local or global. But I am curious, let me know in the comment section below what you're using the bookmark pane for if you're using it at all.